Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm your entrepreneurship tutor, Professor Henry Buiz of Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology in Kenya. I want today to talk about political entrepreneurship. And the question is, can politicians be entrepreneurial? Well, first things first. What's politics? There seem to be a number of definitions. Next, according to our researcher and professor, Dr. Maita, Politics is the exercise of power and is linked to the phenomena of conflict and cooperation. So as I've mentioned a while ago, politics is about the ability to control and influence the behavior of others. And when we talk about conflict in politics, competition will possibly exist between opposing forces reflecting a diversity of opinions, preferences, needs, or interests. So the existence of rival opinions, different wants and needs, will lead to disagreement about rules. On the other hand, cooperation is about working together, achieving goals through collective action. Yes, conflict and cooperation. How about this definition? When I use the word politics, many of you were going into all these negative connotations. Politics means three C's. At least the Lebanon. It's about conflict, corruption, and confessionalism. Every time we talk about about uh, politics, immediately I can think of wars, sectarian tensions, corruption in public institutions, bribery, under the table deals. So this this has been always the question. I always ask myself why politics cannot be about innovation. Why, when we use the word politics, it can't be about fi finding creative solutions to our problems. Better managing our public institutions. Is that difficult? So why politics always linked to negative connotations? And, and Yes, not just in Lebanon. In the Kenya, my country, in Africa, politics is linked to negative connotation by many. Now, what about political entrepreneurship? There are also a number of definitions. In the economy, political entrepreneurs basically are involved in the whole game of rent-seeking, to use the public choice term, and transferring wealth to themselves uh, and power to themselves uh, and to their supporters. And so they're basically involved in wealth destruction, uh, the whole process of politics, of trying to secure a wealth transfer to yourself or to your group under the auspices of the state is a wealth destroying because the opportunity cost of that kind of behavior is production. You know, if you weren't in, involved in politics, you would be involved in producing something or other. This is a very old libertarian theme that there are only two ways to make money. One, produce goods or services for your fellow man uh, and persuading them to buy them from you. Or two, using the power of the state to force money out of the pockets of one group uh, and into the pockets of your group. Yes. I think there's more of politics, in my opinion. It's not even political entrepreneurship, rent-seeking and all that. But yeah, that is his opinion. Now, how about this one? Uh, politics can be defined in many ways. In this case, uh, I'll be defining it as the means of utilizing power to make decisions to address societal problems. And many of you in the room are entrepreneurs, so I'm sure you'll have very uh, real-life experience of what it means to be an entrepreneur. But for this case, we'll talk about Entrepreneurs are someone who sees an opportunity to create something new and valuable and is willing to take a risk. And so the definition of a political entrepreneur is someone who creates new ideas and innovations and acts as a new leader in the field of politics. Yes, political entrepreneurship. So that is another one more. One more. Now, a political entrepreneur is a person who creates ideas, innovations, and acts as new leaders in the field of politics. So, political entrepreneur, that is entrepreneurship and politics put together. Now, can political entrepreneurship be an innovative way of playing politics? Let's listen. There is a different way to practice politics. I started searching, I tried to look uh, up like what are possible ways to transform it and then 
based on my business experience, part of me is an entrepreneur, and part of me is an activist, I realize if we bring these two concepts together, there might be something in it. And I would call these outstanding individuals political entrepreneurs. So we're talking about politics, managing the public sphere and public affairs, so it means providing us with the best quality service and ensuring our rights. At the same time, it's about entrepreneurship, taking risks, creating value, being innovative. Imagine we mix these two concepts together in one individual. There might be something in this. I tried to research the concept um, online. Some of the definitions, a little bit of literature, it says it describes it as if it is um, uh, individuals using politics for individual financial gain. That's not what, I, what I'm meaning here. I'm meaning about these outstanding individuals who can stand for their values, have a vision, at the same time, they're willing to govern and manage the public space, public in institutions, providing policy solutions, at the same time, being risk takers and create value and solve our issues. Yes, listening to this Lebanese uh, motivational talker, look, take politics, mix it with the entrepreneurship in one person, and he says, that will be great. So, should we teach political entrepreneurship? Now, political entrepreneurship is said to be a third wave of entrepreneurship. The second wave was social entrepreneurship. And the first wave was business entrepreneurship. Let's you listen to this. Happening now is the third wave of entrepreneurship, which is about using entrepreneurial tools to tackle political challenges, to tackle the innovation of democracy. This is what political entrepreneurship to me is about. It's about people founding new political parties to enter parliaments, to change the political systems from within. You can try to change a political system from the outside with an NGO, with a movement that's, that's, that's fine and that's important. But what I'm describing is people founding new parties, trying to enter parliaments, of course, also trying to enter governments sooner rather than later and trying to change the political systems from within. This is what political entrepreneurship to me is about. Yes, political entrepreneurship. We have heard about founding new parties to enter parliament to change political systems from within. Yes, we keep hearing about that in Kenya. Listen to this one. Kuna economic model inaitwa bottom up ambayo itawezesha mwananchi mwenye hana kazi apate kazi, mwenye hana biashara apate biashara, yule wa kilimo apate mapato zaidi na Kenya iweze kwenda mbele. Yes, you can see a new party is being formed. Is it a coalition, UDA or any other as me or but for the purpose so we are told to going into parliament to change things. So, looks like political entrepreneurship, is it? Now, it appears that America's President Biden is also preaching bottom up. This bill puts working people in this nation first. It's not hyperbole, it's a fact. For too long, it's been the folks at the top. They're not bad folks. A significant number of them know they shouldn't be getting the tax breaks they had. But it put the richest Americans first who benefited the most. And the theory was, we've all heard it, especially the last 15 years, the theory was cut taxes and those at the top and the benefits they get will trickle down to everyone. Well, you saw what trickle down does. We've known it for a long time, but this is the first time we've been able to, since the Johnson administration and maybe even before that, to begin to change the paradigm. We've seen time and time again that that trickle down does not work. And by the way, we don't have any against w wealthy people. You got a great idea, you're gonna go out and make millions of dollars, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But guess what? You gotta pay your fair share. You gotta pay some because guess what? Folks who are making on the, living on the edge, they're paying. And so again, all it's done is make those at the top richer in the past and everyone else falling behind. This time, it's time that we build an economy that grows from the bottom up and the middle out. The middle out. And this bill shows that when you do that, everybody does better. The wealthy do better. 
Everybody does better across the board. Oh yes, Biden talks of bottom up and middle out. Interesting, isn't it? Now, how do Kenyan politicians understand the bottom up economy? Let's listen. If you did this and you say bottoms up, <laughs> this is the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting, bottom up. But there are those who needed training to actually understand it. And what is trickle down and what is bottom up in simplified terms? Uh, by working from the bottom down. Top. Down? Yeah, from up to, to, you know, from top to bottom. Yes, quite a bit of it. So, do we need education, really? Now, there are those who have gone an extra mile. Sahi, ila economy, inatumika sahi katika jubilee government, niya top bottom. Top ni kusema nini? Tunaanza kwa wale mabwanyenye, wale maexperts, wale wana earn 150,000 and above, tunaanza kushuka chini. According to Ruto and his allies, the model holds the key out of Kenya's economic ruins, focusing on empowering small and medium enterprises. Yes, trying to understand it. And now let's listen again. I just want to emphasize that let us not confuse Kenyans with semantics. Let us not start talking to Kenyans about which model or that model. You know, we are beyond economic classes. The challenges facing Kenya are not academic. Because we are having people saying this is a model from this corner, this is a model from this corner, what is your model? Ladies and gentlemen, let's tell Kenyans the truth. One, do we have a challenge of public debt in this country? We have it, we acknowledge it, and it's eating across the economy. It's making it difficult for businesses to borrow. All tax revenues, 70% are going to repaying debt. So. We know that there is a challenge of debt, so we address it. Do we have a challenge of punitive taxation on the Kenyan people? Yes, we do. Businesses are suffering, are choking under taxation. So we need to find a solution to broaden the economy. We are not saying that Kenyans should not be taxed, but we need to graduate from additional taxation to new taxpayers. How do we create new taxpayers? Well, tutafanya nini ili watu waingie kwa tax bracket kwa sababu wameanza kupata namna ya kufanya kazi? These are the challenges which we face. Challenges indeed. Might we not after all require some academic approach to some political issues? So it's just just semantics. Well, one presidential candidate talks of bottom up. Another one kind of refutes the same. Now, the bottom up author attempts to answer the question of taxation. It's because so that we can expand and capture the food, uh, 16 million Kenyans who today don't have jobs and have no businesses, no, neither do they have enterprises. That's the reason why we are pushing that we create more businesses, more enterprises at the bottom. And that is why we are saying a bottoms up approach of our economic model will enable us to create more enterprises at the bottom, be able to raise more taxes, get more people engaged in work, and we can then begin the process 
of having the necessary resources through an expanded tax base that will take care of our development needs and we will then reduce our reliance on borrowing because this year alone we are going to pay a trillion shillings to service our debts and it is necessary for us to rethink on how we can develop more resources locally. Apparently, the author must have convinced somebody. But wait a minute. Elsewhere, there are some thoughts about jobs creation. Suppose we'll talk about more than 100 million jobs to be created. How are we going to do that? People I met in the Arab world, in Lebanon, these people who can have a competence of being able to adapt to learn, how many times you meet politicians who can listen? Rarely I can go into an office and they can ask you questions. They can't even ask questions. So imagine if we live in a world where politicians can listen, ask questions, learn, and tell you, oh, maybe I don't know, uh, help me out. This cannot have it happen easily in, in our world today. There are people who are like this, who can adapt, learn to new realities at the same time being created. The, th the third competence is responsibility. It's about the responsibility and the responsiveness at the same time. So you know, when people become becomes politicians, when people become politicians, imagine they become a, a different class. So they drive different cars, have bodyguards, suddenly as if there is a gap between them and citizens. They forget that people who got them into power, they have needs and they got them for a reason. So the, a third important governance for the next generation of leaders, political entrepreneurs, is about these people who can be responsible, means looking at the system as a whole and see how they're going to solve problems at the, sa at the same time, hearing people's needs. Well, perhaps those who did not understand bottom-up or who criticize it were convinced and we have seen them joining what they criticized before. But is it really? The Kenyan problem as I see it, and I can't be contradicted on this, is that we have, and I've said this before, that we are in the business, if we want to be metaphorical about it, that we keep on changing the forests to mean political parties, but the monkeys remain the same with their old habits. Yes, are monkeys still remaining the same? Just changing the forests? Well, now, can Kenya's current crop of politicians make political entrepreneurs? As a country, we have been extremely unfortunate in that we have had a poor crop of politicians. The first crop of politicians that we had in the country measured very favorably with world leaders, with world politicians like Gandhi, like Kwame Nkrumah, like uh, Nehru and others, that was Mzee Jomo Kenyatta and his colleagues in the first government, people who fought for independence. They had grand ideals for this country. But then thereafter, after the demise, their demise, we have now current politicians, and there's very little really to admire them for. Recently, I said in Court of Appeal that most of them, you get the impression that they are job seekers, they are office seekers. And they come up with things like amendment of the Constitution because they want to continue to be in power. They, want, they, don't, they don't seem to have really much that they can offer the country. Yes. Either they come up with bills or they continue giving handouts to the populace as the populace remains poor. Watch this. Those are our crop of current politicians. Just sample that. They come in different shapes. They come with different ideas of making the populace remain dependent on them. 
So, should we teach political entrepreneurship so that we can create a new crop of politicians? Look at this roadmap for that. Change, not just within the party. And this is how, over time, you change the political paradigm, you change the political system, you get into coalitions, and you can have a real impact and make a real difference. So this is what political entrepreneurship is about. And I'm Yes. Perhaps we should think of teaching political entrepreneurship. Yes, at university, at all other levels, if a curriculum can be designed to fit all levels, even starting right from a primary school political entrepreneurship. Well, if you liked it, please thumbs up, like it, share it, subscribe to get more, and please leave a comment. Thank you for watching.